Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, and thank you all for being so hospitable. Um, it's been fantastic time here for someone who doesn't understand the language. Um, <laughs> last night was really good. I, uh, I went up to do some work and came down at 7.30 and was like, where did everyone go? And apparently you all got told in, in German while the quiz was on. But of course, I don't do the quiz because I haven't got a clue. But being even more bold, Sigrid, I'm assuming, just stood up there and told everybody that where you're going tonight, which whoopee cushion to miss, and all that sort of thing. So, uh, no, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been really good. And it's been really nice to see some different nationalities. Um, I've, there's been a little bit of a club of the non-German speakers going, oh, let's all speak English, um, uh, which is really helpful. <laughs> So, um, anyway, I want to go through um, hidden secrets. It's not quite what you think, some of it. Um, but I will show a few of the things that are in Joomla 5 and that we've been working on. Um, a little bit about uh, me. Uh, who am I? Now, so... <laughs> thank you. So, um, I... Benjamin said it'd be really good to translate it all into German as well. Um, be really kind of helpful. And so I use Deeple. It's really good. And I've resi Do you want me to translate? No, 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 no. No, it's fine, fine. And then about two hours ago, he sat there and went, oh, that's not what I'd do. So, so there's been some correction, <laughs> but not a lot. Um, yes, so I come from... That was really weird, coming here and having to stand in the rest of the world. And I didn't feel the tectonic plates break, but apparently we're no longer part of Europe. Um, there's, I was one of those that obviously uh, voted to stay in Europe. Um, and there's now a lot of sentiment to uh, all those who thought it was a brilliant idea and then what do you mean we can't just go over to Brussels and get our Belgian beer and all that without the tax and duty? And what do you mean we've got to pay for this, that and the other? So now there's a real big sentiment of, um, why don't we have another referendum? And actually all those who uh, really s wanted to stay in Europe, we're actually kind of thinking, no, no, let you suffer a little bit longer. There's an there's a English word for it. It's called schadenfreude. Um, I don't know if you know it. <laughs> don't know if it translates. Um, but yes, definitely. So um, that's who I am. Um, and a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a, a rower. Uh, in fact, I um, stand there. Um, I'm, I'm going to muller a lot of names here. Sander Potier, um, he and I both row, uh, and he, we both rode on the Thames in what's called the Great River Race, um, but we didn't know it. It was only a year later in Rome that someone said, oh, you both row, and we worked out we were actually standing a metre from each other in the same tent, receiving awards for the race we'd just done, but didn't know each other, but had been communicating. So, um, yeah, it's funny, what a small world it can be and how many people you come across that, that use Joomla and are part of the community. Cyclist. Um, some of you may know um, I have you know, some good friendships in, in the German community. Um, Harold is a, is, a, is a really good friend. We have a very colourful relationship. <laughs> private, private joke. Um, and, and of course <laughs> and, and of course Benjamin um, I learned a lesson which Many of you should learn if you haven't already. Uh, during COVID, he son one day said, um, do you fancy when COVID is over, coming all the way to Germany and on the hottest day of the year, cycling from Munich to Berlin for two weeks and in the middle of it doing a, a, a sprint to do the documents? And I, I didn't say no. So you've got to get that knowing quick. I'm an inventor. I've, I've patented inventions. Um, I'm a cat owner. Quite a lot of you have seen Flo when I do the, the uh, London user group. Um, and in fact, she has a GitHub, well, two of my accounts have, uh, cats have GitHub accounts. Um, so sometimes I actually do stuff as them. Um, real ale enthusiast, which is the same in German, but so I put warm beer to distinguish us. Um, and recently taking up running and a juggler. And someone said to me that you've really got balls coming to a foreign country and doing a speech, a talk in a different language. And I said, yeah, and I'm prepared to prove it. So... These are actually approved by the marketing team. <laughs> the, uni the unicycle would have been more difficult through customs. 
Um, so what have I done in Joomla? So I started with the CMS release team as a, in Teams. Uh, uh, Robert Deutz um, invited me in. I helped him. And then when he left uh, from that team, I took over. And uh, then uh, I had already met someone uh, in Barcelona, uh, Sigrid. Uh, we sat opposite each other, and that was fun because I turned up with a fully working testing system. And we were shown how to do it the Joomla way. And at the end of that afternoon, I had a totally broken testing system, and everybody else's worked. So, uh, but we got to chat and and, and uh, uh, get to know each other. And I asked her if she'd become team lead, uh, my assistant. And then when I moved on, she became team lead, and now she's head of production. So, um, you know, it's it's all moved on, and it's great. It's great to see people coming in, um, growing in confidence, and then taking things on. GSOC. Um, I took on uh, GSOC mainly because I didn't say no to Benjamin quickly enough um, some years ago. And we, hmm? oh, sorry, Google Summer of Code. Um, and we then do the, yeah, I forget, everybody calls GSOC. And then we do, I, I must admit, I sat in several meetings thinking, GSOC, GSOC, what are they talking about? Um, and I become one of those. Um, uh, and then we did the Summer of Code, which is the Chinese version of it, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, and hopefully we'll win uh, Google Summer of Code again, um, because we do get a lot of uh, the projects come through uh, the GSOC projects into Core of Joomla. And also some of the projects, I mean, the Guided Tours actually started off many years ago with the person who is now running the GSOC projects, which is really sweet, um, and Shivam. And we've had several other, uh, Jatin and, I ah, can't remember the last one, several different, thank you, um, several different uh, students take those projects on and see them through. Uh, and then Esty and Olivier uh, have really put a lot of work and effort into getting them into their release of Joomla. And there's a lot more that's going on into Joomla 5, um, which I'll come on to. Uh, then around the time before, I took over marketing uh, because there was no marketing team. I'm not into marketing. I had to be very quiet about that. Um, so started that, rebuilt team, and then was went to outreach. And recently, um, I applied as the uh, vice president. Um, thank you all. Um, and uh, I've run the London News Group for about 16 years. Um, so I feel that a lot of people would know me in the community. Um, and, you know, I've, I've done Jim London. So I had the great accolade of the first day I was here. Uh, I just had a conversation with someone, walked to the lift, and someone came up behind me. They're probably in this room. And they said, are you Peter Martin? <laughs> and I said, no, and he went, but you speak English. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, um, so, yeah, <laughs> Peter Martin's there, by the way. Um, and I met Peter, 2009, Maidstone. It's a long time ago. Um, and, you know, it, it, you, you get to know these people. You get to still be called by these people's names. Um, and you, you grow with them. I just released a, a module. Um, I was really proud of it. And by the end of his talk, I was ashamed of it because there were so many things I thought, I hadn't thought of that, I hadn't thought of that. But you learn and you rebuild it, repackage it, set it out again. So, go on. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, at this point, yeah, yeah deeple. Um, so, I'm one of the things about the after lunch. Uh, talk. I'm so pleased. I was going to do 20 slides, three minutes each. That's an hour. Crash it by 15 minutes. I don't need to. You're already late. So this is, you know, it's uh, it's it's a dream for an Englishman. Um, so I just want to do a little bit of exercise here. So hold on to your laptops or whatever. Could anyone stand up if they're a member of Open Source Matters? Okay. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Could anyone stand up if they're a team lead? Okay. Is anyone here a member of a team? Okay. So keep standing up. Okay. So I hate to break it to you because apparently when you join at OSM, you grow horns and all that. You're all members of OSM. You're all members of Open Source Matters. The membership of Open Source Matters just means you're a member of a team and you're contributing. And that is it. It's just different things. Now, 
could everyone else stand up who's not standing up? And those that are standing up, sit down. They are a bit of exercise. Excellent. So you are our hidden secret. You are the people who are not members of a team. Thank you. So please sit down. So we go through some real bits of the secrets of Joomla, but I'll come on to you guys later. <laughs> um, so there are a lot of new things in, in Joomla 5, and I'm literally just going to flick through these. You can read these in the um, uh, release notes, um, and they'll be being updated by Harold by Tuesday, I hope, um, <laughs> for us to release on Tuesday. Uh, beta 2 means there's, there's, n there's nothing else that's going to go in there, so everything that's in there is, is there. Um, the big thing about Joomla 5 for me, uh, when I had my marketing hat on, and also as someone who hosts a lot of sites, is that Joomla 5 is an upgrade, not update, but an upgrade, not a migration. And they are, there's, they're different things. Um, so, and, and why do we do it? Well, other CMSs are available, um, and they may run on versions of PHP which are now not secure, that are very old. And that's one of the reasons why they keep all their users. We tend to be more on the cutting edge for security reasons, speed reasons. You know, there's some really nice things in PHP. We need to be able to use them. So it allows us to get the best of all worlds with the least pain by doing the way it has been done. The reason that it can be done is because there's a compatibility plugin which will bridge the gap uh, from those extensions needing the deprecated methods and the new Joomla 5 way of doing things. And one point which Benjamin and, uh, uh, made to me is, if it works with the plugin off, it's already Joomla 6 compatible. So, you know, that's a really interesting thing to push out there, that you can set up your dev site, um, copy everything across, do the upgrade, I must not say update, um, and then switch that plugin off and see what do, um, uh, extensions are causing an issue. Speak to those um, extension developers, um, try and nudge them to, to change it so that it does, and then you know that you'll actually be compatible with the next. Um, Joomla 5 code cleanup. Now, when it's interesting, there's been some pushes for us to have votes for features and stuff like that. And when you're kind of new to it, you think, oh, that sounds really good. I could, I really do with that. But actually, when you're in core, one of the things that you have to do is look after security, speed, all that sort of thing, making sure the code is, is, is clean, tidying things up, refactoring. And and doing new methods and, and ways to do things. And that's not the sexy stuff. That's not the stuff that most people would vote for. But actually, it's the stuff that we all need, all the extension de developers need, to keep that code running really well, to keep the site secure. Um, and I, I really appreciate the time and effort that goes into things which then look like, oh, that's not a feature. Well, it is a feature. It's a feature that's keeping Joomla safe. And it's also keeping our sites uh, able to be expanded, and also allowing developers to do new things with their own extensions. So the code cleanups are really important. Um, and then you can use the, the best uh, modern ways and the newer PHP. Now, how did time? Um, guided tours, uh, the comeback tour, uh, we're coming on, on to the hidden gems in, in five. Um, guided tours came in uh, in four, um, and with Olivia and SD. And it, we got it in there, and it was then used by extension developers, which was really nice. Um, it was the part for the extension developers wasn't really that mature. And so several of them came along and said, Do you know what? We really would like it to be able to do this, that, and the other. It's like, oh, that's really good. So a little group of us have been meeting every Friday afternoon, um, and um, several developers who, who tried to use it uh, and tried to do certain things with it and failed in some ways, um, said, can we clean this up? Can we clean that up? And came together. And Garant Edwards is um, one of those that, who did the um, compatibility checker uh, between three and four, uh, helped with that. Uh, he was one of those that put a lot of code contribution in, as well as, uh, as well as Olivier and SD. Um, and so that's been refined. Uh, and there's a lot of refinement, which is actually 
going more to the developer end, so the developers can use the guided tours. And I want to show you um, the, what we're, what it should then look like. Um, and it's one of those little hidden things that a lot of people don't realise. We've already got guided tours in there, um, and the the way you could extend it out for your own clients as well. One of the things that they've done is they've put an identifier, and Harold, thank you, because I was in that conversation and it really helped to work out what should be done. Um, and so we've got an identifier in there which actually allows you to stipulate where the guided tour is coming from. So we can have core guided tours, and there can be guided tour about the menu, and there's a kind of a nomenclature. But you might, as a developer, want to do your own guided tour um, which is your company's name, and you want to do it about the menu as well. Well, they would clash. Not now. So you can have your own guided tours. Um, it also allows them to be uh, loaded from other places than, than uh, were originally worked. It allows for multi-language, so the multilingual part is coming into guided tours. Um, and it also makes it contextually aware. We've actually built in contextual awareness. So you can actually um, show a number of guided tours in the back-end plugin, and you can say, I want five contextually aware ones. And then if there are five, um, wherever you are, so let's say three, four, five menu ones, they will be the first ones there. When you move to content or categories or something else, it will be different ones because it will know where you are. Or a different uh, extension. So if it's your own extension, you won't see all the normal ones. You'll see the ones for your extension at the top. Um, so all this has been, been done. And I'll, I'll actually... Um, show that. Um, the reason it's called Guided Tours Come Back Tour is I've written an article about it um, detailing most of this, which will come out in the next magazine, uh, which is the 20th, so only a few days a few days away. Um, and so there will be screenshots and a walkthrough in there. Um, we've already got Welcome Tour, um, Dashboard Tour, uh, more contextual aware tours are in the writing, um, and so some of those will come in 5.1. And there was a lot of discussion about importing and exporting for developers. And I think the final decision was that the exporter would be an external thing because not all Joomla um, installations need it, but it would be something you could then put into your Joomla uh, and use that to import and export if you needed to. Uh, right, so let me just uh, get out of this. Uh, Now, there's laughter, and I have no idea why, so. <laughs> oh, okay, excellent. So, I'm going to show you logging into your Joomla 5 Beta 2 for the first time. I'm pretending it's the first time. I might have to fake it. Um, so. No, it's not. Almost. There was five there. Ta -da! So here is, how's it look on there? So here's the welcome to Joomla, congratulations, blah, blah, blah. And it's the start of the guided tour. And this is one that would show when you first install your Joomla. But once you run this, it won't show again. You can go back to it. But it's a, and the idea is that when we have 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, we can show the new features for those things here um, and point people to uh, what's new. So as you can see, it's contextual. It will, you can point to the various areas. You can still move around the system. It can highlight areas, move, move around. And we've even got some links to the forum and to uh, test on GitHub. And this is the, the point. We can try and engage with people more um, and, and give them a... a a, a marker of where they can go to find the community. Because we're actually quite quiet about the community when someone installs. We're very shy about it. It's all in the help, but very few people know where the help is to get the help. So I've completed it, and we can do take a tour here. And you've got the guided tours here uh, and the welcome one. And as you move around, you would actually get different tours um, if you wanted, if you were contextually in a particular contextual area, um, or if you were in someone else's extension, 
So that's the improvements. And you can also, let me just do show all. And you've got all the guided tours there that we've got so far. So this can expand, this can grow. And um, I'm really hoping that uh, third party developers will, will embrace it and use it for their own. And let me go back to the fun. Where's my thing gone? Slides. No, I don't want that. Where's the play gone? Slideshow. There you go. Right. So apparently this doesn't. Uh, some of the other things. Go on. No, um, it's it's um, in the database, um, and there's an auto at the moment, and there's a on the uh, in the guided tours table. Um, I could have shown you about that. The very last one its column is one and zero, and so we can we can mark them. So that's now lost its one; it's a zero. So if I go back in there and put a one in the table, it will show again. But it's only shown once, so it wouldn't be every super user. Um, so. Some of the other hidden secrets are more structural about what we're doing um, through uh, Open Source Matters and some of the initiatives. And one of them is um, the pizza, bugs, and fun. Now, we had one very recently, um, and it was a great success. So can you remember some of the figures? There was 500 documents, 150 pull requests. Oh, more than. OK. Um, and. If you've not taken part, um, I really would encourage you to. I'll, again, I'll come on to it a little bit more right at the end, 15 minutes. Um, but we've now got funding. We've got funding, thank you to IONOS, who um, have been sponsoring. And we will be doing a pizza, bugs, and fun every six months, um, which really helps bring out those releases and, and iron out some of those bugs. Um, So a couple of other things in here. We've been trying to change the culture to some extent. And you know, they've, they've been um, in the past, um, people have said that some of the atmosphere can be hostile. And I, I hope that you've noticed over recent years that some of that hostility, some of the uh, members who have been members for quite a long time have called it out and said, come on, guys, you know, work together. You don't need to be like that. Try and be more friendly. Try and make this a friendlier um, better place for us all to work because we're all giving up our free time to do this. We're all um, doing it as volunteers, and it needs to be a place which is encouraging volunteers. And it can be very intimidating and frightening if you're new to it, like the, the Google Summer of Coach students. Imagine if your very first pull request gets a really negative comment or um, isn't, you know, well done. There's a few things here that need to be tidied up, but well done for trying. Can we guide you through? Um, just our attitude can make a real difference. Um, one of the other uh, big structural changes is the way we do uh, the releases now. Um, so, I mean, George was had the task for years. Um, he, I, I mean, I, I know George quite well, and he used to come to Jumla London, and we used to buy him scampi and chips and try and get our features in. Um, and 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 over the years, it was it really, really did take its toll. I think so. Um, now we've got I, Benjamin was the last where there was just the one person in charge. We've now got teams of two, and I don't know if you've noticed, but they're quite varied. They're, they're I mean, um, and it's not all coders. Um, SD would be quite happy to say that she's a manager and she's really managed it well. And they've been some of the smoothest releases we've had. Um, and so it's it's teams of people managing it. And they shouldn't be the ones that are creating all the code. They should be the ones that are um, managing you guys who come up with the ideas to get those uh, pull requests into the core. The really good ones should be getting in there and they are helping you to get them in. So the ideas need to come from you and the, and the coding hopefully would come from you as well and the production team. Um, predictable release cycles, I really hope that they help. And you know there was some criticism at first um, and we listened to some of the timing and shifted the timing. Um, but I think it's helped everyone. It's helped all the departments because marketing then knows 
well in advance when things are coming out. Social media team does. And as we grow those teams and we can do more, having predictable releases really helps. If, if you know, in the old days when I was in production meetings, it would be when's the next release, we don't know or, or we can't say. Um, and it was very frustrating. Um, whereas now we know when six comes out. In theory, we know when seven comes out if we carry on with the schedule. And it seems to be working and seems to be making it a much more focused and polished process. We have a post-release process. Now, in the <laughs> I like warm beer. And in the old days, when the release happened on the Tuesday afternoon, if it wasn't Joomla London, so I could escape, it would be, well done, great, look at um, various social medias to see if I'd spelt something wrong, fix my spelling mistakes, and then off down the pub I'd go. And then occasionally there'll be a phone call, and it's like, we've got a problem. Um, and so beer on the side, come back. Those days have gone in that we've got uh, systems, tables, we've looked at past problems and we've looked at what would be the best thing. Because with hindsight, you might not have pulled that release. With hindsight, you may have put out a press release, given more documentation, done something else. So to be able to go through those processes, and it's it, Sigrid, Harold, Benjamin, they've really put a lot of effort into um, making that a much smoother process. So these are things that Joomla 5 now has and really should help us push out the product more. Um, so we've already done who is part of OSM. It basically, all the team members are uh, uh, and all the team leads. Um, and what I really want to do in the last few, few minutes that I've got is encourage more of you to get involved with these changes, with this product predictability, with... In the, the teams behind it, so we've been talking to new people that would like to be release leads, um, and we can say there's a whole team of people there to help you. Um, and Sorry, release managers. There's a whole team there to help you, and there's people that can talk your level to explain the things that you need that you would gel with, You know, because we don't all gel with everybody, um, and we'll be able to guide you through, buddy up, and help you. So I really would say, if you were a contributor in the past and you stopped contributing for a reason, and some of you have come up and had a chat with me about this, I'd really like it if you would reconsider and look to joining teams and pushing some of those ideas that you had again. Because we have tried to make things change in the core, um, and I think it's much more open and there's a lot more listening going on. Um, Yeah, we've got regular meetings with the community. So Crystal started that, um, and we're doing a meeting every first first of the month um, in two different times, uh, morning and evening. We're there for an hour. You can come and ask us anything, and it has been anything. Um, and so, and we want it to be kind of a, a place where you can come and ask questions, where you can have a bit of a rant if you need to, uh, rather than going on social media and get your message across, because we will listen. And sometimes you can't do things straight away, but we will try and address those issues and those problems that you have. The magazine has loads of contributors. I heard a little while ago for the first time, we've got too many articles for an edition. It's like, yes. Um, you know, so rather than... So we're not scraping around. There's things in the drawer ready for the next one. There's more and more contributors stepping up. And we want to get more out there. I've been talking to David about doing um, articles to encourage more security and showing best practice for extension developers and all that sort of thing. I think there's a lot of education we can do. And that magazine is getting more and more traction. And Anya has done a brilliant job, Luca. They've, they've really put a lot of effort in. And it's actually a really fun team to be part of. So again, if you want to get an article in, um, have, a, have a word with Anya. And um, you, you'll be, you know, I'm sure she'll be very welcoming. Uh, the market is growing. We actually had an uptick, mainly because Benjamin asked. He was doing a talk, I think, in Germany and needed the market to rise. So he said, could you just make it rise? Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, but we actually have seen a market share rise um, last Christmas. And at one point on W3 Tech, we were the fastest growing CMS, which isn't bad for something that's 16, 17 years old. Um, and it would be really nice to do that again. So we've had a bit of a dip, but it's starting to level off again. So... 
if we put a bit more effort into, and I think the release of Joomla 5 and the fact that people will, especially web agencies and that, will go, oh, okay, it's not so bad. It's, you know, we're not having a huge amount of work to do, but we are getting the benefits. I think that message will slowly get through. And over the next few years, it will really start to, to help us grow. Um, so, yes, it has re reversed the years of decline. Um, there's a couple of articles I'd like to po point to, um, uh, revealing Joomla's uh, secrets uh, here. We've got the Joining Mattermost. So I wrote an article on that some time ago. Um, if anyone wants any of these links, uh, give me a shout and I can give you the presentation anyway. But um, there's how to join Mattermost. And we've got a great community there. It's 600. It's been so much better than where we were before. Um, and I really enjoy the way that we all engage on there. Um, I'd encourage people to join a jug. How many people here are members of a jug? Okay, good number. But there's at least half of you that aren't. And, you know, we need the jugs to become... COVID's gone. I mean, still got it in the UK a bit. Um, but, you know, we can start meeting in, in, in person. And I think there's been a big lesson on doing uh, online as well, which has been really helpful. So it's a good time to start a jug. It's a good time to get more involved. And if you're worried about what you should have and all that, speak to some of the other jugs. Speak to me, speak to Sigrid, speak to others that run jugs and have done for quite some time. We'll be able to find you speakers, give you ideas and formats, and maybe have joint meetups, um, which will be quite culturally interesting um, and, and, and really helpful. I mean, occasionally I go into the Australian one. I have to tune my ears in a little bit for at first. Um, and then there's all the banter and the cricket and all that sort of stuff, uh, depending on how we've done. But actually, they're really good and we have good fun. And it, it works. We can just about do the... The, the Australian one in the morning for us, the evening for them, and vice versa. Um, so reach out to other jugs um, and start jugs in your area. If you haven't got a jug, it's how I did it. Um, it was like we've got nothing around here in London. I'll start one. Um, and it wasn't that hard. So I would encourage everyone, especially those secret people in this room, to join a team. Uh, ooh, to help with testing, to help with testing. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a typo after. Um, push out about every release. It's one of those things that which I've spoken to several groups here. A lot of extension developers don't mention that Joomla 4. Point whatever is out or Joomla 5. Why? Because, you know, if our market share goes up, your market share goes up. So let's really... And, and one of the things that Crystal's been very active going out into other communities um, and as president of OSM, and she said one of the things that she's heard is, Joomla, I thought it was dead. I thought it gone. We've really got to shout about Joomla and to get the name back out there. Um, so social media, please do just push out through your social media every time we have a release. And social media team will be more active in pushing out the extension developer stuff uh, and being, you know, and trying to use our resources as much as we can. Because I think it's a win-win if we all help each other. We're not in isolation. Our markets are the same. Um, and as I say, if we grow then your market grows to actually have more people use it. Um, help, make the uh, help change the culture with positive messages. And, and that can just be taking someone on, um, and I come on to mentoring as well. If you see someone new, someone struggling, pick them up and help them. Um, give them suggestions. Show them how to do stuff. Um, the jugs are a great place to come and find this stuff, but often it's a two in the morning when you're doing something. So we've got an improvers channel where um, we kind of insist that um, you, there's no bad question. There's no criticism there. So, and it came about because some senior members of the community said, I actually feel embarrassed asking this question, but I don't know the answer. So it's like, right, we make a channel where there's no one that's going to be embarrassed. Just ask the question. And we'll be, those that are moderating it will be reasonably heavy on those that criticise. Because you should be able to ask a thing that you don't know and not be frightened to be able to ask. So please, come into those channels, ask your questions, be a mentor. GSOC and the uh, other um, uh, um, competitions that we'll do. It'll be really great if you were becoming, 
became a mentor for some of those things um, because we do need mentors officially for those. But you also need just buddying up and mentors in the community. And I've done that with a few people. And, few, and Benjamin's been brilliant. Every Friday, he used to laugh at my code and then improve it. Um, I mean, I learned so much from those few hours on a Friday. Um, and my coding improved so much. And it gave me confidence. You know, and I'm a lot older than Benjamin, but I don't mind saying I haven't got a clue where it comes to that. And he has been really, really helpful. And Peter as well, you've helped me over the years, and I've learned stuff from the stuff you've done. You know, we're all here to help each other, so be a mentor. Write documentation. We need documentation. And I know there's been a documentation uh, presentation already, but please, more documentation. I wrote three articles Help for Joomla, Time for Joomla, and Work for Joomla. They've all been there for quite some time. Um, but they still are relevant. So voting when there's competitions, all that sort of thing, um, would be really, really helpful. And as I say, if you need the links, just give me a shout. Interestingly, they don't work in German. You know. um, so the future... Oh, that's not the one. Right. So the future is the community. It's the developers. So, I mean, who's, who's a developer here? There's a lot of you. So, you know, you are the future. And sometimes there's friction between extension developers and that. I don't know why. You know, we, we really, really do need the extension developers to extend Joomla. Um, those who have not volunteered yet, we really would like to hear from you and welcome you and find somewhere that you can fit and just have some... Um, place for you in the community that you can get more involved and feel that you're really doing more there. Um, we need more people in the teams. Some of the teams have died. Um, some of the teams were literally one person on their own and, and they burn out. So if you're passionate about something, uh, SEO or accessibility or anything like that, join one of the teams that's already there. If there isn't a team, come and speak to uh, production or outreach or whoever it's needed and, and see if that team could then be reformed. Maybe as a working group first, see how it goes and then make it a team because, you know, you can really make a difference to Joomla. You are Joomla's hidden secrets. Um, as I say here, don't stay hidden, don't stay secret, shine. And I'd like to thank you all for such a welcome time here and just give yourselves a round of applause for making Joomla and Joomla 5 what it is. And I'm on time. <laughs>